Hey, in the loving kindness, we appreciate, Father, the opportunity we have to come together tonight to study thy word. We pray that all things that we do and say will be in accordance with thy will, and that we, Father, will take what we learned this evening and use it in our life, that we might draw closer to thee. We ask thee to bless those that are sick, especially those of thy children. May we, Father, be able to encourage and to strengthen those of this congregation as well as others. We ask thee to forgive us of our sins as we forgive others of their sins against us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. You know, today, you and I as Christians have marching orders for the church. This is not, this is not a new thing. This was started way back with the children of Israel. And the children of Israel, as we understand and realize about their nature, and what they were involved in. They were leaving the land of Egypt. And the thought was in mind that whenever they were leaving the land of Egypt, they had a lot of ties in Egypt. They'd been taken care of in many ways, had much food. And so some of them were in despair as to whether or not we were to leave. Because what are we going to do when we get away from here when we don't have all that we have now? But sometimes we get to understand it's just like you and I as Christians today that leave the world of sin and become a child of God. Our purpose in life is, is to always stand strong for the church, stand strong for the truth. And just like the children of Israel back in that day and time, they were given what we call marching orders. Their objective was, as the scripture says, to go forward. I'm going to look at Exodus chapter 14, and I'm going to be reading verses 15 through 18. Sometimes in our lives, you know, we, we try to make decisions on our own without God. We don't need to do that. We may need to make decisions based upon what the Word of God tells us to do in our lives. If we consult God first, then everything is better. But sometimes, you know, we make choices. We want to do this and we want to do that. And we don't necessarily want to listen to what God's saying. But after they had prayed all of these years and pleaded with God, take us back to our homeland. God sent a deliverer. And the deliverer was Moses. So in the book of Exodus chapter 14, beginning in verse 15, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they, they go forward. But lift thou, thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow thee. I will get me honor upon Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. For a long time, Pharaoh had made fun of the God of the children of Israel. He had made ridicule of them. He'd made ridicule of God. He would ask such questions as, where is this, where is this God? What do you think this God is going to do for you? Do you think this God that you have is mightier than we are in the land of Egypt? Do you think he can do as much as we can do? Well, understand and realize that God says within these verses, I will get me honor upon Pharaoh. I will show Pharaoh who is the true God. And so we understand as the story goes that whenever they had went after the children of Israel, when the children of Israel had passed through the sea, and all got through that, the, that Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen decided they would go after him. And they got down into the sea, and we all know the story of how it, it was muddy. And I've often thought how unique it was that these children of Israel had marched through this area, through this sea, on dry ground. Then when Pharaoh and his group got there, then it turned muddy, and they began to sink and to mire up. Understanding and realizing and knowing that God is God, we all know that and understand it. But tonight I want us to focus on something about the idea of mind of words for the church and what the church ought to be and what the church ought to do. 
The simple idea in mind is, brothers and sisters, we need to go forward. We don't need to back up. In the book of Luke, chapter 9, and verse 62, Jesus said, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ has made the same thought to mankind as Moses made to the children of Israel. I want you to look forward. I want you to march forward. I don't want you to look back. I don't want you to turn back. But sometimes, just like the children of Israel, they got to wanting to look behind and see what was coming. There's nothing back there that you need. And just like whenever you and I become a child of God, in our past life, there's nothing back there that we need to enhance our life today as a Christian. We need to put our past life behind us. Then someone asked the question, well, can I remember loved ones? Oh, oh yeah, that's, that's what enhances us and strengthens us. Can I have memories? Oh, yes, we can have memories. But the idea in man is don't ever turn back and live the way you used to live before you became a child of God. Serve God well. So our thought in mind tonight for this lesson is go forward. Don't back up, but keep on pushing. And I know sometimes there are those who say, well, it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle to, to, to sometimes to push forward in the Christian life. You don't realize what I face in my job. You don't realize what I face in my home. You don't realize what I face with friends. Well, I've, I've got a home. And I've had a lot of friends that were not members of the body of Christ. I've been around a lot of people in my lifetime that was against the church. But brothers and sisters, I have seen and looked at both sides of what life is. The life we leave behind when we become a child of God, having our sins washed away, is a life worth living because we've got everything to look forward to whenever the Lord comes someday and gathers those that are His. But I want us to always remember this. When the Lord comes back someday, He's coming to get His people who are members of the church that He died for. So we most certainly want to be one of His people. And just like He said, keep on, keep on looking forward. One of our objectives as members of the body of Christ is to seek and to save the lost. And someone may ask the question, well, where are the lost? Everywhere you look. Everywhere you turn. And this means the idea in mind is that we need to go out and, and we need to enlist people to be members of the Lord's church. We need to go out and we need to encourage people to become members and let them know what they can have if they become a member. Let them understand that their sins can be forgiven in baptism. They can be washed away. Let them understand what they can face with a new life and a new idea and a new thought. And look forward and always look to God. Always look to Jesus. Look to the word that Jesus gives to us in our lives. Over in the book of John, chapter 1, and verse 45, and the idea in mind of enlisting others, we find that back in that day and time, they did. They went out and they enlisted others. They went out and encouraged people to come. In the book of John, chapter 1, and verse 45, it says, Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, We have found him that we read about in Moses and the prophets. We have found the one that we've been studying about. We've heard this all of our lives. We've heard about Moses. We've heard about the prophets. We've heard about those of old who stood renowned before God. We've studied about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. We've studied about David, who was a, a man after God's own heart. We studied about the great prophet Baal, Elijah, who fought against Baal, and how Elijah prevailed in that occasion and in that time. He said, we've, we've studied all of this. And the whole time that they were studying about this, we realized that all of these back there, they were looking forward to the one that would come. They were looking forward to a Messiah. And the question was, who is the Messiah? Who's this going to be? because they knew about the great prophets. And even, even in this time now, when the New Testament, they talked about how they thought, well, maybe this Jesus that is here, maybe he's Elijah. 
Maybe he's one of the other prophets. Maybe he's one that has come back because they knew full well that Elijah, what happened to Elijah? How did Elijah die? He didn't die, did he? How did, how did he go to heaven? Chariot of fire. Isn't that amazing? So we have another man in the Bible that went to heaven because God took him. Who was that man? Enoch. So these two men, they, they knew about them. They studied about this within the scriptures of the Old Testament. And so knowing about all of this, they could have thought, well, maybe it's Elijah that's, that's come back. He didn't really die. Well, no, this is, this is different than Elijah. This is one that's a mighty man. And just like John the Baptist told him, said, there's one coming after me that I'm not even worthy to reach down and unloose his shoes. He's greater than I am, much better than I am. And so the idea was in mind that John was preparing the way for the Lord when he came. Does anybody remember where John was baptizing people? Jordan River. But there's a particular place that is named. Annan, and that was near Salem. But he was baptizing people who were coming out from Jerusalem and all around. They were coming to John to hear what John was saying. This man out here in the wilderness, boy, he's smart. He's got wisdom. He's telling us things that we, we haven't heard in a long time. And so they all went out, went out there to the wilderness to John, and John baptized them. I would love to know how many John baptized. I would love to know the account of how many came to him at that time and that occasion. And there were probably some that came, and they didn't want it. But many did. And it's just like today. You know, we go out and reach to those that are lost. And friends, we can't, we can't make them obey the gospel but we can encourage them. We can invite them. And they need, they need this invitation. You see, the invitation that Jesus gives in Mark 16, 15 and 16, he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to who? Every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. Every person alive needs to hear the gospel. They need to hear this truth of God. And the thought in mind to understand is, is who's going to do this? When are we going to do it? Will it be done? Am I going to be one that will fulfill these words that Jesus gave? Am I going to be one that will go out and talk to my fellow man about salvation? Talk to about being lost? Talk about being, having your sins washed away in baptism? Will I be one of those that do that? I sure hope so. Because friends, we need, we need to let people know and help them to understand. But we need to do it not tomorrow. We need to do it today. We have the habit in life sometimes of saying, well, I'll get to it someday. I'll talk to somebody that's lost and you know, I'll tell them, I'll tell them about Jesus and, and I'll tell them about salvation. I'll tell them about the church where you can be saved in the church. I'll, I'll do that someday. But when is that day going to be? You know, we have the habit of putting things off. We need to, we need to say something now. Drop a, drop a hint. Drop a clue. Just give words to people that can understand. And let them have an idea of what the gospel is. Let's look at the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 21. And I'm going to look at verse 8. The thought what is in mind that I gather from this verse when we're talking about the marching orders for the church and what the church ought to be and what the church ought to do, I think about some words that are, that are in this verse. 1 Samuel 21 and verse 8. And David said unto Abimelech, And is here, not here under, under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapon. With me because the king's business required haste. You know, we can always get in a hurry to do something. But let's always, let's always be equipped. You see, this is one of the purposes that we come to the house of God to study. We come here to learn. We, need to, we come here to put the knowledge of the word of God in our mind. 
We allow ourselves to be filled up with this knowledge. And when that time comes, that time comes that someone asks, what must I do to be saved? What, what can I do to go to heaven? What can I do to live with God? And, and you see, friends, that's the time to do it right then. Because we need, we need to not fool around. But we need to teach the people this gospel because, because they need it. You see, we need to obey orders. You know, Jesus Christ gave orders for his apostles. He gave orders for them to teach. He sent out the 70 and ordered them to teach. He said, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. If we today go to the lost sheep, where are they? Where are the lost sheep? Everywhere you turn. Everywhere you look. Because you see, friends, we must understand that everybody needs to hear the gospel. I heard a preacher say many years ago, nobody deserves to hear the gospel once or twice until everybody's heard it once. Everybody, every individual needs to hear this gospel. And that's why that we equip ourselves, we obey the orders. In Acts chapter five and verse 29, Remember that Peter and the apostles were questioned about what they were doing, about healing the man? They were questioning about what, how can you do this? But what authority do you do this? And so they gave him a strict warning. We're going to let you go. But we don't, we don't want you to teach in this name anymore. Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you listen, you make sure the apostles understand this. Don't you go out and teach in this man's name anymore. And Peter and the other apostles said in Acts 5, verse 29, that we ought to obey God rather than man. So friends, today, as you and I conduct our life, are we obeying God or are we listening to man? And understand and realize that whenever you and I are trying to teach those that are lost, it's not always easy. It's not always a piece of cake, you might say. But sometimes we endure hardships. Oh, I've had people throw accusations in my face. I've had people say all kinds of things about me and to me that, that you don't know what you're talking about. I've even heard them downgrade God. I've even heard them downgrade Christ. We hear people that say, but you, you can't do this. You, you can't teach people this today. Why? I've got orders from a higher authority than you. I've got orders from the Master, the Savior. I've got orders to come to him from God. And understand that these orders that are given to me are orders that I must obey. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, we find some words and thoughts that were given to Timothy. And the thought in mind was that Timothy has these words that we look at, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3. And the thought was in mind to understand that, that Timothy knew and was taught well. Can anybody tell me who, who taught Timothy? Who? Okay. Now, isn't that, isn't that amazing? His mother and his grandmother taught him. And it, and, it, and it shows us that we can all teach others. That we can all give somebody the gospel. It doesn't, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take a lot. But in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3, he says... Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I want, to be, I want to be his soldier. I want to be his follower. Oh, I won't, I won't, I'll probably be like David. I probably can't wear the armor that people wear. You know, they tried to put Saul's armor on David. He, he couldn't wear that. He wasn't that big. So David said, I don't, I don't need your armor of this. He said, I'll go out there and fight this giant and, and, and God will be with me. God will give me the victory. When he crossed the brook, he picked up some stones. <coughs> what, how many did he pick up? Five smooth stones. Have you ever wondered why it says five smooth stones? The thought was in mind to, for me to understand. If there are no jags or places to hang, if they're smooth, they sling a lot better. And it would work a lot better. We have five steps that I would call smooth, 
Five steps of salvation. Hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. In these five steps, friends, they are easy to follow if you want to obey God. But you and I must be ready and aware that whatever we face, remember that we're doing this for the Lord. Remember the Lord is watching whatever we do and whatever we say. And we, friends, need to bring this to thought and mind to know that I can stand for the Lord. One thing, next thing that I need to do is that I need to, I need to be alert. Are you, are you an alert person? Do you, know, do you know what's going on around you at all times? If you're driving down the highway, are you alert to what's coming toward you? Alert to what's behind you? Alert to what come, may come from each side? If you go to some of these places where there are eight lanes of traffic and you're in the middle lane, are you alert to what all is going on around you in these lanes? You see, friends, in life, we need to be alert to what we're facing every day because the devil wants to defeat you. He wants to ruin you. And he will use people to ruin you. He'll use people to put you down. In the book of Mark, chapter 14, and verse 38, Jesus gave us some words that would be very useful for anybody that's a servant of God. Mark, chapter 14, and verse 38. He says, Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. We realize sometimes in this life that we face kind of things that are hard. We kind of face things that are rough. But yet let's understand that this, that this word of God, if we're equipped with it, we can be alert to what we need to do. We can be alert to what we need to teach. But also, he says, be courageous. Are, are you courageous? Do you ever feel kind of like, I don't know if this person is going to take what I say to them or not. I don't know how they're going to react to it. Are they, are they going to tell me to get lost? Are they going to tell me they don't want to hear what I've got to say? So really, I've got to be prepared at any occasion to stand my ground. I've got to stand for the truth. In the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 6, we were taught about the idea in mind of being courageous. And back in that day and time, they needed, they needed a lot of courage. They needed a lot of help. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 6. He said, Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance in the land, which I snare unto their fathers to give them. I'm going to give the people land. I'm going to give them a place. But what we're going to understand, just as they were given land back in that day and time, and granted places to live and land that they could call theirs, God is, given a, is providing a land for man to live in after this life is finished. And that place is called heaven. Am I, am I preparing for that place? One thing that I need to do right now, I know, I know that I need to march forward. I know I need to enlist others. I know that I need to be able to obey the orders that the Lord gives. Don't leave, don't leave an order out because every order is important. Everything plays a great important part in the salvation of the soul of mankind. But what I've got to do is, I can plan all of this. And we can plan all this together. But friends, it don't do no good to plan it and to talk about it if we don't get busy. If we don't start putting it into effect. Because, you know, we need, we need to put these things into effect. And I need to be busy. Now, I didn't say busy body. I said busy. But the thought in mind to understand is that I need to be, don't just talk about it, but be, be busy. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. And I want you to notice what the wise man said on this basis of being busy. And whatever you and I can do in our lives to strengthen and encourage our own life. Because words that are given all the way through the scriptures are given to help us to be strong before God and to be true to his name. 
Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. For there is no work nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. Friends, I can't, I can't fulfill these things when I'm in the grave. I can't, I can't these, fulfill these things when I lead this life. I need to be busy doing these things now while it is day. Because Jesus said, do it while it is day. Because the night cometh when no man can work. We make plans. Let's carry out our plans. Let's fulfill the law of God. Let, let's be an example. Because we can all be examples. That's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It says, let your light shine. It didn't say make it shine. It said, let it shine. And that would mean, friends, that I would take my life and put the words of God in my heart and in my mind and allow myself to face these things every day because I need to be doing this. This is the will of God. When a man rejects the will of God, what is he doing? When we turn against the law of God, how are we standing? Friends, we don't, we don't want to do that. We all want to be workers in God's kingdom because we want to bring the lost to Jesus. Don't be a hindrance. Don't stand in somebody's way that is doing work for God. Don't ever, don't ever tell somebody, you, you can't do this. You can't convert them. Friends, if I'm, if I'm looking to somebody and I'm teaching them the gospel. I have confidence that the gospel will work. But it's got to work on the basis of that I'm willing to teach it just exactly like it is. So I tell you that if I know somebody that's lost, don't tell me you can't convert them. You can't, you can't lead them to the, law, to the fold of God. And I'll tell you why you shouldn't tell me this. Because I've seen people that I thought within my own mind that I could probably never reach. But I tried, and they obeyed the gospel. So don't ever, don't ever give up. Don't ever turn anything down. Don't be a hindrance. Let's look at Joshua 22, and we're gonna look at verse 20. There were those back in the Old Testament time just as well as there were those in the New Testament. They were sometimes hindrance because of the things that they did and the ways that they lived. Joshua 22 and verse 20. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on, him, on all, to all the congregation of Israel? And that man perished not alone in his iniquity. Sometimes it is easy when a man sins to lead others with him. Sometimes it is easy for a man to follow the things that are wrong. And we don't know why. We don't know what happens. But that goes back to what we said a while ago about being strong. That's what we mean about the idea of man of standing our ground. Always, always do right, whether people don't like it or not. Always stand with the truth of God, whether people say it's not any good. Because the truth of God will not perish. It will not fail. The words of God will do what they're supposed to do. They will, they will help us in our lives. But we've got to put them to effect. We've got to use them. Have you ever worn armor, anybody? What about the Christian armor? We wear the Christian armor because we want defense. We want to stand against the wiles of the devil we want to stand against every sin that is hurled at us, every ridicule, every accusation, so thereby we wear, we wear this armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. We find that armor of God is talked about on this basis. And the thought in mind that things that we face, things that we face in our lives, 
can be hard. But Paul said to the Ephesian people, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. We need that breastplate. We need that helmet, that helmet of salvation. We need that breastplate of righteousness. We need our feet shod to the preparation of the gospel because we need that gospel within us. We need to be a walking Bible. A man came to a place I was preaching years ago and someone asked, with this preacher that's coming, what kind of man is he? Someone said, I can tell you this, he's a walking Bible. And he was. Friends, he knew the Bible thoroughly. He knew the Bible solidly. And thereby you and I need to equip ourselves with this gospel that we friends need, need to be a part of this work. But one thing that I do know, the, the church needs volunteers. We need those who are willing to stand up and to say, here I am, what can I do? What can I do to serve God? What can I do to help this church make progress? What can I do that we can reach those that are lost? What can I do? Well, one of some things that I can tell you that you can do, you can encourage your preachers, Case, those who come to teach us time and again, those who present to us the word of God, encourage them, tell them, tell them that you appreciate what they're doing. Tell other Christians that are working in God's kingdom that you appreciate them. But we need, we need volunteers. Would you, would you volunteer? Well, yeah, I'll, I'll volunteer. What, what does it take for me to volunteer? Well, if you're gonna volunteer, you're gonna to have, to, to have to work. Work? I don't want to work. Well, friends, if you don't work in the Lord's kingdom, the time's coming when no man can work. The day is coming when all this is going to end. I don't want to come to the end of my life and say that I didn't do what the Lord asked me to do. I didn't do what the Lord said. The Lord will say to those that don't, thou unfaithful servant. <coughs> Let's always be prepared. Let's always be ready. Would you be a volunteer? Let's look at Luke chapter 24. And let's look at verse 47. I want you to notice some words that Jesus gave in these, were, in these thoughts. Luke 24 and verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. He wanted it preached in all nations. When he says in Matthew 28, <coughs> excuse me, go ye therefore and teach all nations. He made it really personal in Mark chapter 16, 15 and 16. He said, preach the gospel to every creature. Everybody needs to hear the truth. So what can I do? What can I do to teach? What can I do to be a leader? Well, we've all, got, we've all got one of these right here, haven't we? We've got a Bible to read and to study. We've got a Bible, as the Apostle Paul says, to commit to memory. And we friends need to take this Bible and we need to let it be, be our guide, be our help. Carry it with you everywhere you go. You say, well, I can't, I can't carry a Bible with me everywhere I go, why not? Why can't you carry it in your mind, if nothing else? Why can't you carry it in your thoughts? Because this word of God, this word of God is kind of like a, kind of like a fire. It gets in you and it just, you just can't wait to get, tell other people about it. You just can't wait to share this with your fellow man. I want to turn your attention to 2 Peter chapter two, and I'm gonna read verses one through two. And I want you to notice some words that are given that we need to heed and listen to. Second Peter chapter two, verses one through two. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, 
even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And this is happening a lot. This is happening too much. We have those that are false teachers that do not teach the Bible like it is. There are those who are teachers that want to put their own ideas and thoughts in it besides the Word of God. This is not good. We need the friends to take this word and pay attention to what we're being taught. Pay attention to what we're hearing. Because sometimes, friends, in life, we just don't, we just don't know what's going to happen. I've been told about preachers in my lifetime. I've been told about those who, who teach things that are wrong. And I have listened to find out. They're on radio. They're on TV. And friends, sometimes they just don't teach the whole gospel. Sometimes they just don't teach the whole truth. And that's why we need to understand that many people in the world are being taught these kind of principles. Our job is a big job. Our task should be fulfilled. It's kind of like I said a while ago, a fire. Let's look at Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeremiah 20 and verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more of his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire, shut up in my bones. And I was weary and forbearing, and I could not stay. You see, friends, this word right here, this word right here will make you a different person. It'll make you a new person. When this word is put into your life, when this word gets into your bones, when it gets into your body, and this word is put into action and it takes your mind and, and, and your mind is full of this right here, friends, this is, this is what we need. We need this every day we live. We need to carry it with us all the time. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when people get discouraged, they've forgotten God? Have you ever noticed sometimes when people get down, they've forgotten what God tells them within his word? This word, as the scripture says, is like a sword. Over the book of Hebrews, chapter 4 and verse 12, it can op lay open the heart. It can lay open the mind. This sword, the scripture says in Hebrews 4:12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Can you imagine something being that powerful? That it can go within you and, 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 and divide the thoughts and intents? That it can go within you and just, just look at you, lay you just wide open to God? This word can lay you wide open that God can see what all is within you and the thoughts you have and the ideas you have. There's nothing hidden from our, our Heavenly Father. Just like we've said before, there were those in Bible times that tried to hide from God. You, you can't hide from God. Because the soul that's within you, God knows where it's at. He knows what's going on. Because this word of God can lay open whatever is going on with you. That's why that he says in Ephesians 6, 17, he said, take the sword of the Spirit. Take this word and let it work. Let it do the job that needs to be done. Because this word right here, when it is put into effect, when it is practiced, when it is carried out by the mankind, when it is carried out by those that are Christians, friend, think of all the examples that are set when we live this Christian life every day. Think of all those that pay attention to those that live this life. People see, people know, and that goes back to Matthew 5, 16, to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Understand, friends, when you do good, when you live by the law of God, it does not go unnoticed. There are those who pay attention. There are those who look. Just like you and I, when we go out in public, we see people of different walks and different statues and different natures, and we know and understand sometimes the kind of lives they may live. But you can tell when a person is a Christian. 
you can know what they're doing with their life. It's like a hammer. The scriptures call the word of God a hammer. That it drives home the point. That it drives home what needs to be driven within the heart of man. Don't disallow yourself to not hear the word of God. Don't put yourself in a position where you don't pay attention to what God's saying. Because we all need we all need this to make our life better. It's like a rock. The rock of our salvation. Matthew 16 and verse 18. Jesus said, upon this rock it will build my church. And I love, and I love what else he says. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If I'm a member of the church and I stay faithful, hell cannot defeat you. It cannot bring you down unless you want to be brought down. If you stand your, your ground for God, if you stand there for Jesus, if you stand on that solid rock, if you stand on that firm foundation, Jesus Christ will help you. He'll guide you. He'll direct you in your lives. Something that we're all familiar with is a mirror. How many of you looked in a mirror today? How many times? Did you look in the mirror back there at the back before you came to the building? Sometimes in life, you know, even our rear view mirror in the car, we go somewhere and we look in that mirror to make sure we still look okay. But we check ourselves a whole lot on the basis of the physical appearance, and that's okay. It's okay to look good. It's okay to look nice. But have we thought about the mirror of the soul? The thought in mind to understand in James chapter 1 and verse 23, James give us, gives us these words and words that we need to listen to and words that we need to heed. He said, For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Sometimes in life, friends, we need to keep on looking in this word. We need to keep on being a doer. In Matthew 7, 24 through 29, when Jesus gave the lesson of the wise man and the foolish man. Wise man built his house on a rock. Foolish man built his house on the sand. Wise man's house stood. Foolish man's house didn't because it was built on a foundation that was no good. I understand, friends, that we need, that we need this firm foundation. We need to stay with it every day. And I love what Peter said in 1 Peter Chapter 2 and verse 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Friends, always desire this word. Carry it with you. Because we need this word that will help us to strengthen ourselves in our life every day. Allow this word to lift you up. It'll give you assurance. It'll give you that feeling in mind that I'm serving God. But we need to go with that intent and that thought every day. We need to look every single day just like we look in the mirror. We need to look and see where we stand. We need to look and see where we live and how we live. Brothers and sisters, stand firm for God. We need that bad in this day and time. We live in a world that's growing wicked more every day. We need to be the example. Thank you very much. <laughs>